Amen. I'm going to talk with you today about five things related to faith. Five things related to faith. I think there's five things that, you know, I want to put faith in you today because I believe that God has great things for this house, for this church, for your life. And I believe that he wants to move miraculously in, in ways we've not yet seen. And so I want to, I want to put faith in you because today faith comes, uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And today I believe God's going to do some supernatural things. Are you with me today? How many of you know God's not a natural God? He's a supernatural God. Our rules don't apply to him. Faith is gas in the tank. It's the spiritual quality with which God is pleased. It's alive and active. It, it grows and it builds. It's, it's a key that opens doors. Faith, it pleases and moves God and it unlocks the power of the word of God like, like water to a seed. And so there's, in these five things I'm going to share with you, I'm going to preempt them by, by sharing how faith works. In faith, the, the Bible gives us clarity on how it works. It, it, the process of a seed, Jesus talks about the parable of the sower, and there's a lot that happens in it. When you look at how a seed grows, and if any of you that's tried to grow grass, you, you're intimately acquainted with this. The seed absorbs water in the soil, and it begins to expand. The cells within it begin to expand through that the respiration rate increases the metabolic process in that seed speeds up it used to be dormant but as soon as water hits it it becomes alive and active it begins to change structurally and then when light hits it it begins to bend towards the light and grow when the shoot comes through the ground because of light I want you to hear me now if if a if a if a shoot pops through the ground in darkness it will always be bent over but if it pops through in light, it will reach towards the light. And, 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 I, and I think there's a key for us in that. Your posture, your structure, your orientation for growth in God's kingdom is drastically affected by how much light you let in through the word of God. The light is the presence of God and it, feel, it fuels the seed. It, it, it makes the seed come alive. The water is the spirit. Jesus said it this way, the soil is the understanding that you have for the word. And I love that, that Jesus taught in, in, in a most basic common way. All the rabbis thought he taught like, like he taught to children. He was so basic, so simple. But, but he wanted all of us to understand that the things of the kingdom can be obtained by everyone. He wanted us to understand Jesus when, when he was baking, he put all the cookies on the bottom shelf so that we could all grab one. You know what I'm talking about? None of you robbed cookies while your mom wasn't looking, obviously. Like, you know, on the top shelf so you can't get them. Jesus puts them all on the bottom shelf so you can get one. Which means that no matter how mature or immature you are in Christ, there's something you can grab in faith. Are you following me? And so he says this, Here's the, the soil is the, the, the understanding that you exhibit for the word. It said, Jesus said, but the one who receives the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. The good soil is understanding and, and, and the activation of obedience. When I get the word and I activate obedience, it doesn't even have to be total. Like, like you don't have to start doing everything, but if you just act in obedience on one thing that God is speaking to you, all of a sudden, that seed begins to change structurally. I want you to hear this. It begins to, it begins to move. It begins to do something. And here, most of us don't know that the seed is doing anything under the ground. We only recognize it when it's like, ah, grass. But, 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 but a lot is changing under the soil of your life when you begin to understand the word and just activate it with a little obedience. Some of you are doing that today. You're in church today. Well done. I'm serious. There's a step that you took that said, I, I could sleep and I could do anything. I could go to the lake. I could do this. I could do that. I'm not putting thoughts in your head. Don't do that. I'm saying you could have done anything, but you said, you know what? I'm going to God's house. I don't think you'll ever come to God's house. He, he prepares a table for you. If you leave and, and you're not filled, it's because you didn't eat. Come on. He's got something for you every time. He, he would never have you show up to his house and leave empty. He don't do that. 
So here's the deal. The soil produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. What's the difference in scale? The difference of your grace, the difference of your understanding, the difference of your submission, the difference of your obedience, all of those things. But even at 30 times, man, that's something worth investing in. Something will always grow in your life. Isaiah 55 says this, as rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return to heaven without watering the earth, so my word goes out and it produces that which I intend for it to produce. Are you with me? And it accomplishes the, pers- the purpose for which I sent it. I love that even though your mind might be wandering, your spirit is grasping something in the word of God that will produce something in your life. If you mix it with faith, it says this, instead of a thorn bush will grow a pine tree, instead of briars a myrtle tree. What that's telling you is something will grow. It can be a thorn bush or it can be a myrtle. It can be something bad or something good. But the word of God will always produce something in your life when you activate it. Growing good things limits the amount of bad things that can grow. If you've ever seen, I don't know why, I think it's because of, it's because of the curse, it's because we naturally tend towards unhealth, right? And most people don't go, I woke up and lost 50 pounds. No, they wake up and go, where did this come from? It came from that bowl of ice cream because we naturally tend towards unhealth, right? It's easy. So here's the thing. I've never seen a field that left untended just produce great grass. You know what it does produce? Weeds. But if grass is there, it's really hard for weeds to grow like it would if it wasn't there. If grass wasn't there. When good things are growing in your life, it takes up the environment so that bad things can't. Are you with me? Instead of a thorn bush, I get a myrtle tree, which in that culture was beautiful and coveted. I want you to hear this today. You plant good things, bad things won't grow nearly as fast or as quickly. Jesus said, the one who receives the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it out, making it unfruitful. Worries of life, and a false narrative of wealth. I want you to hear this. Worry, in, in, in the Greek there, Jesus uses this word worry, and it's a Greek word, and it means to divide up, to, to break into factions. So when, 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 when it says the seed falls on thorns and the worries of life, you can let the worries of life break up the peace and the unity and the grace and the goodness that, and the fruit that God wants to produce in your life and make, make you start fighting against yourself. Make you start fighting against the purposes and plans of God. He says that, that, that the worries of this life, worry means anxiety. It means that anxi- I allow anxiety to break up the peace and the joy and the purpose that God is trying to plant in my life. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Are you with me? So, so the worries of this life and the, 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 the deceitful... I, when I think of worries, I think of, of Peter and Jesus on the waves, right? I, w- I want you to hear me here. He's walking on the water with Jesus, right? You can be, you can be locked in on Jesus... And confidently walk on top of all that he's called you to in faith. Or you can divert your focus, consider the risks, make the waves bigger than the one who commands them, and sink into what he called you to instead of treading on top of it. Are you following me? That's worry. I start breaking up my gaze. The deceitfulness of wealth. This passage is, is so so. By the way, before I move on to wealth, I just want to say this for somebody in this room. Prayer is the antidote to worry. That's why Jesus said, do not be anxious for nothing, but by prayer and petition, present your request to God. And then the God of all peace, which transcends your understanding, will lead and guide your hearts and rule in Christ Jesus. Are you with me? I want you to hear this. So, So prayer is an antidote to all the things that are going on. 
the deceitfulness, my belief in the untruth of wealth. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe, but the wealth of the rich is a fortified city. They imagine it an unscalable wall. Before his downfall, a man's heart is proud. The strong immovable tower of the name of the Lord in your life in comparison to the fortified city of wealth, what he has built and what you have built. What he has built will always last. What I have built will never. Are you with me? It's a question of confidence. What is my confidence in? Am I dependent on him or am I independent? Faith is always dependent on God. So it says, it says that the seed that was choked out by thorns, it just says it didn't bear fruit. It didn't say it died. If you think about it, the seed looks the same that was choked out by thorns as the one that produced fruit that fell on good soil the only difference is there's no fruit it reminds me of a lot of people who sit in church and go man I thought this was abundant life no see what happened was you redefined Christianity because somehow you allowed worry and a lie to sink into your heart and it divided up your confidence and who you were putting your trust in and it robbed you of fruit. I don't know about you, but there's nothing more frustrating than working hard for something, following the steps, following the process, and getting nothing. Are you following me? I don't know about you, but anybody, I'm focused on grass because I have a bitter root judgment about it. I just, I've, I've tried to grow grass, I've tried to grow grass, but I did everything right, everything right, all the money, all the time, all the things, no grass. You want to curse the ground. <laughs> Why? Because I put everything in and got nothing in return. And, and that's, what, that's what the Bible is saying, that, that you, can, you can get the word. You can get it. And, 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 and the deceitfulness of, of the world's narrative on wealth, the worry that's in my heart will choke it out. Faith, supernatural faith, hear me, always seeks it always seeks seeks what it seeks all that God has for you but worry will choke it out so bear fruit in season the Bible says the righteous are like trees planted by streams of living water which leaf does not wither it bears fruit in season I want to say this to you there's people in here that are frustrated with God frustrated with his word I want to tell you I'll prophesy it right now you are going to enter in if you're faithful into a season of fruitfulness don't compare yourself to what's happening in somebody else's life just go God I know that you've got a plan for mine and if I'm faithful Faithful, I will bear fruit in my season. You can't bear fruit out of your season, but you can in your season. Yep, that's right. That's right. You don't see what's happening with the seed under the soil, church. You only notice it when growth in life starts to happen above the surface. But here's the thing. God is the God of, 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 of under the soil, not just above it. He knows what's going on under the soil. In the secret place of your prayer, in the secret place of your faithfulness, God will cause things to sprout that you have not yet seen. So faith is a means by which these things happen. It's by faith. Everybody say, by faith with me. Come on, say, by faith with me. I, I want you to hang out with people of faith because when you hear faith, it grows in your life. I'm not saying ditch the other people. Pray for them. But listen, Abraham was blessed when Lot left his life. There are some people that will keep you from all that God has called you to. You don't leave them behind, but you don't let them hold you back from what God has for you. You hearing me? Tether to them in prayer. I, it's not only by faith, but it's in proximity to faith. By faith. I live by faith. I don't know the neighbors you live by. Some of you live by the neighbors of can't, of won't, of never, of impossible, of worry, of fear, of limited natural thinking. But I want to live by the neighbors of yes and amen. Come on, is anybody out there? Did anybody wake up today? Come on. Of yes and amen. 
Come on, some of you got a health diagnosis and, 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 and that ain't good, but I know there's a healer in heaven that's better. He's the God of yes and amen. There's yes and amen. I want to leave, live by, by all things are possible. By my God is able to make all grace abound to you so that at all times and in everything, you have all that you need. Hello? Are you with me? I want to live by those things. My God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I want to live by the God of he will make a way where there is no way. Streams in the wasteland, oasis in the desert. I'm not talking to somebody. I want to live by the God of more than a conqueror. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Hello? Every tongue that rises against you will be silenced, the Bible says. Great will be the peace of your children. I want to live by that neighbor. That's by faith. Who do you want to live by? Because whatever, I don't know about you, I run in my neighborhood sometimes. Some of you have almost hit me. Thank you for avoiding it. It's usually when I'm tired and fatigued, I don't look at the cars. Just try and get to the destination. I smell what my neighbors are cooking. Sometimes I'm like, man, I wish you'd invite me over for dinner right now. That's brisket. <laughs> Can you smell what faith is cooking? Yeah. If you live by faith, then you can get a whiff of what faith is cooking. And it's always more expensive than it should be, more unreasonable than it should be, and impossible without Him. That's what God calls you to. That's what God calls you to. Go and stand up, girl. You can shout me down. It's by faith. It's by faith. There will be very little in your life that pleases God more than faith. The two that I can think of are faith and holiness. Faith does something. Jesus said, if you just have that much, you can say to that mountain, be removed. If you just have that much. See, I think the problem with, with, with faith is that it is completely and diametri diametrically opposed to everything we've been taught. You do it, your thing, your way, your stuff. When you realize it's all about him and it's all his anyway, and so are you, then he can start to use supernaturally everything that you have. Faith seeks. Say it with me. Say, faith seeks. There was a woman by the name of Hannah. 1 Samuel chapter 1. Hannah. And that day, they married more than one wife. God never told them to. They just were crazy. I can only handle one. And she can definitely only handle me, one of me. But they had, they had, there were two. One was Penaniah. She had lots of kids. There was Hannah, she had none. And this woman, every time that Hannah would go to the house of the Lord, I want you to hear this, this is Satan, would make fun of her, would ridicule her, would irritate her. I don't have enough time to get into all of it. I prepared just an amazing, no, I'm just playing, message that I'm not gonna get to share all of, but I want you to hear this. Please hear me, hear me. God's word put that in there because there'll be times where you try and find an answer in Jesus and somebody will try and keep you from it. They'll ridicule you. Say, why are you going to the house of God? Why are you going to the house of God? Some people will never be enough with all that they have because he was never enough when they had nothing. If he's, if he's enough when you have nothing, then he'll be more than enough when you have everything. So this woman has everything, yet she, she's got to make fun of Hannah. Insecure, mean, spiteful, all the things. Why? Because she was never enough before kids, so she was never enough after them. And Hannah is just so irritated in her spirit, but she knows where to go. She goes to the house of God. You know why? Because faith survives. Supernatural faith survives. You're going to hear two voices in your life. One will always, there were two trees in the garden. The garden of the tree of life, good and evil, and the garden of the tree of, uh, the, the tree of life. Which, which tree do you want to listen to? The tree of the knowledge of the good and evil or the tree of life? There will always be two voices. Hannah had to survive the onslaught 
of you will never, you're not enough, you're horrible, you're not, you, you'll never have any lineage, you'll never have any line, you'll never have any care. And she had to listen to a voice that was different. She said, God, if you give me what I'm asking for, come on. By the way, her husband tried to get her to settle. He was like, I, you know, he's trying to comfort her. He's trying to say, hey, I know you can't do this, but, but aren't I enough? I mean, do you really, you need to have this in your life? Can I just tell you, supernatural faith doesn't settle. Some of you have settled. You've settled. It's time to come home. It's time to get real. And it's time to have some faith in one that's bigger than you. Her husband said, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than 10 sons? See, comfort can cause you to concede the promise of God for your life. I say this. Some of you are looking for somebody to help you drown in a common emotion. Instead of giving you a hand to pick you up out of it. And bring faith into your life. Because faith is always more powerful than empathy. Hear me. You can find somebody to help you recite your narrative. To, to, to drown in that common emotion with you. I know I had that same thing happen. Isn't it horrible? Or nothing wrong with that. But you don't stay there. You say, God, help me out of this. God, help me to trust, believe, love, forgive, have faith again in a greater way. You get up. Comfort will cause you to concede the promise of God if you stay in it too long. God didn't call you to be comfortable. Did he? I remember that. See, Hannah knew that faith, faith speaks. Say it with me. Say faith speaks. You know you're saved by faith? You're saved by faith? You have to speak that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. That's what establishes it. The Bible says, if I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that when I speak what God put in there, something changes drastically and eternally. Faith speaks. She started to pray, God, whatever it is, if you would just give me this, then, then I'll, give, I'll give whatever you give me back to you, which is exactly what these parents did today. Whatever you give me, I'll give back to you. J -j -j just, just fulfill the desire of my heart. Come on, how many of you know that you serve a God that cares about the desire of your heart? He does. He, he's the one to put it there, more than likely. You know, when, when, when Hannah has Samuel, the greatest prophet in all of Israel, she names him Samuel. It means, God heard me. Think about it. Every time that boy's running around, it's a reminder. God heard me. God heard me. God heard me. Samuel just pooped his diaper. God heard me. This is what I asked for. Come on, always be appreciative of the blessing, church. It's what, it's what we ask for. Supernatural faith sees. It speaks, it sees. God always spoke to, to the men in the Bible and said, see what I'm about to do. See the promised land. See that Jericho will fall. See, see, see. Hannah has a child, Samuel, and she sees the promise of God. And the Bible says that when she took him to the house of God, he worshiped there. She had built something in her life that God extended. Faith will always open the door for God to speak to you. Do not cut him off. The voice of God contains the life of God. The Bible says not one of Samuel's words fell to the ground. Think about it. The one that ridiculed Hannah, all of her words were forgotten because of what God did in her life. All of her words fell to the ground. But God gave her a promise who when he spoke, none of his words fell to the ground. It means that everything that Samuel declared came true. Every single thing. God knows how to vindicate what you can't deal with. 
Are you hearing me? You don't have to fight that battle. The best talking you can do is with your game. And it's just like, I just had the greatest prophet in all of Israel. Scoreboard. You see what I'm saying? You don't have to fight that battle. God does that for you. Faith survives, church. Faith sees. Faith speaks. Faith seeks. Does all these things. And I just, I just in this moment, would you just bow your heads with me today? In this moment, I want to encourage you. Faith does all of these things. And I want to get faith in you. Our prayer team's going to be up here, and, 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 and I know it's a sensitive subject, but I believe God is going to heal some people today, even some women today, some men today. Come on. Maybe this is a difficult day for you. I don't know, but, but I just believe God is going to bring some things into your life. Whether spiritually or naturally, there's going to come, there's going to come a harvest in your life. I just believe that we're Lord today is that, that, that there, there's, there's, it's time to come home. The answers you're looking for are found in Jesus. They're found in his house. And God wants to place faith in you. And it, whatever you need prayer for today, when I'm done, I, I, there's people here that will war in prayer with you. But I love for you in this moment to be inspired by faith. Maybe you don't know the God that Hannah did. Maybe you don't know the God that I do. It's a relationship. You can start one today. The problem is we all have sin, which, which unfortunately makes, makes our ability to be with God impossible. Because He's holy and we're not. Eventually that sin leads to ultimate death, which is hell. God never intended for you to go there, by the way. It wasn't created for you. And he gave his one and only son so you'd never go there. Today there are people in this room who have, who have turned their back on God. It's, it's time to come home just like a dad with a kid who's been gone. Jesus is just waiting on the porch ready to run to you. Would you come home? There's people here that have never said, God, I make you my Lord and Savior. Like, I give you my life. I, I, I'm not just trying to do a church thing, but I, I give you my life. I surrender. I submit. It, it's time for that. You're just not guaranteed tomorrow. I've lived long enough to know that. I've said goodbye to too many people. If you're here today, you can find faith in Jesus. So if you would, we're going to say this prayer all together. And at the end of it, I'm just going to ask you to acknowledge that was me. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. That's it. And we're going to cheer like crazy, like, like our team just won the Super Bowl for you. Because the Bible says there's he rejoicing in heaven when one comes. So would you say this with me? Say, God, forgive me. I come to you. And, and I turn. I thank you, Jesus. You paid a price I couldn't. When you went to the cross. When you rose from the dead conquered death and hell so I receive your abundant and eternal life I give you my life and I'm all in I make you my Lord and Savior today Jesus thank you for saving me cleansing me and giving me a new start in Jesus name heads bowed eyes closed you said that prayer you meant it in your heart right now I want you to raise your hand like you're so proud thank you come on thank you come on come on right nice and high thank you thank you keep them up keep them up let's celebrate with those people come on